Hello everybody. If you're watching this, you can see that Dad and I with our Christmas trees in our Christmas outfits. If you're listening, yeah. you'll just have to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, everyone, <laughs> today we are, well, I'll let Dad do the introductions. <laughs> yes. Yes. Today I'm talking to Tice, Tice Van Leer. And although I've known the music of Focus for a very long time. I only met Tice a few years ago and he was such a lovely guy, such a clever, amazing musician. And I met him at Trading Boundaries where I met him and Focus and him on his own and had lots of wonderful chats with him. So I thought when we started doing this, it would be brilliant to bring him along. He's, how to describe him as a musician? Typically, he sings and plays the flute and keyboards, but he does other things as well. But he is an inveterate performer. Uh, I, I've heard stories about him when we were on the cruise ships, for example. He says in the talk that if he sees a piano with nobody sitting at it, he can't resist. He goes and sits and plays. But he would also wander around the places the, the cruise ship stopped, walk ashore, go into a coffee bar, and within minutes he'd be jamming with local people without even knowing there was musicians there. It just seemed to be, he was like the Pied Piper, a very wonderful, friendly, incredibly talented Pied Piper. You've never met him, have you, Freya? No, but I remember that, I think for some reason, I was at university, I was at a, for some reason I couldn't make it to a Focus gig at Trading Boundaries. And everyone was saying I had to come because I used to play the flute and I should say, <laughs> and I just thought, no, that will be too demoralizing. <laughs> <laughs> Because I could only play Air Irlandaise and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> but it might have been, no, it might have been fantastically inspiring. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> I couldn't make it. It wasn't that I didn't come for fear of being demoralised. I couldn't make it, but I would have loved to have seen. And obviously I've heard him play and yodel which is absolutely amazing. And actually, interestingly, I don't know, for me, yodeling and flute playing, there's that same sort of, it's that melodic trilling, I don't know, something about it. <laughs> but like you yeah. talk about him just turning up in places, that's always how I imagined I'd love to play the flute. It's just like going to some folk night in a pub and jamming with people. Well, if you go to a folk night in a pub, everyone's geared up for it. I mean, Tice walked into a coffee bar, I don't know, I can't remember where it was. <clears throat> it might have been Mexico or one of the places we stopped and just walked in, not to a music venue, but to a coffee bar. Yeah, you couldn't do that in England, though. People would just think you're bonkers. <clears throat> I'm not at all sure Tice couldn't do it anywhere. <laughs> I hope that's true, because I do think there's something very stuck in the mud about English people, not the Celts, that, which is what <laughs> it's so good. You say geared up for it, but I reckon you could walk into any pub in like Wales or Ireland or Scotland and start singing and there'd be people joining you. But obviously I grew up in England, so that never really <laughs> felt like an option. Also, I can't play, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tice is a wonderful, wonderful guy. And I hope we meet him and see him playing again this year because everything was cancelled last year. And he often coincidentally has a concert at Trading Boundaries when I have an exhibition there. So it was, well, I was going to say it's sad that this year was cancelled. The exhibition is there. Um, and I think actually today it's open, but. It's not always, uh, but it will be extended for a month or two. And it'd be wonderful to see Tice there next year or anywhere. 
Anyway, in the meantime, here is Tice. Have we very one time. What did you say, Dad? I said, he's a very wonderful guy. Here's Tice. Enjoy. Oh, so can you show me again? Because I wasn't recording. Yeah. yeah. They're lovely so, sculptures. That's a lovely collection you have. Yeah. This is a Polish sculpture. And she did it especially for listening to focus all the time. So it's wow. a focus kind of inspired thing. Yes. And next to that, it's a sculpture of mother and child, Maria and Jesus. Yes. Done by Maria Jesus. She's a Chilean sculptor and mosaic maker worldwide for the Roman Catholic Church. And next to that is a statue of Inayat Khan, who is the founder of the Sufi movement. Right. And it's made by Charlotte van Palland, a Dutch sculptor. And this very small one, I don't know if you get it. Yes. <clears throat> uh, this one that is me <laughs> yes yes wow it, okay. it's really amazingly good yeah and so i show you now some work of uh, annelies she made this one this one this one I love them. This one. And this one. And they all hang in a in a row. Like Yes. So there's more work of hers here. <clears throat> They're very powerful. Nice, eh? And uh, one is here. Hang. Wow, yes. <clears throat> Your home is full of art. <laughs> yes. And what else can I tell, tell you? Yeah, this is my piano. <laughs> and my cupboard. Is that where you compose? Yeah, no, no, no. That is somewhere else in the house. That is uh, most of the time it is here. This is the place where I compose. Right. And many more paintings. Yeah. I have a painting by a friend of mine. His name is Jan. That's this one. It's amazing. Yeah. That's lovely. Under that is a statue of Johann Sebastian Bach. Oh yes, who's he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I've lost you, Tice. Yeah. I don't know what's happening. Hmm. You might be a long way from your router. Ah, oh, there we go. You're back. Yeah. That is something that I painted when I was 14. That is you painted? One. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's that one. And that one is uh, like an icon. Yes. Made by uh, Maria Jesus again. Right. The Roman Catholic painter. And those two are again Annalises. Those two. So. And this is my keyboard. It's like a keyboard and headphone. So that is in a very short flight about what I can show you. And this is uh, all the gold and platinum, all the, let me make a little more light. You've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So that's about it. It's gold from America and a diamond from the Netherlands. So. This is two diamond records from the Netherlands. Amazing, thank you. Yeah, so I go back to the normal place now. Uh -huh. So, can I ask you about composing? Yes, what, one, what shall we start? Well, one of the questions everybody seems to get asked, and I thought it was an interesting place to start, is the question we get asked all the time is, where do your ideas come from? Yeah. There is always an urge in me to compose in the first place for group focus, which is, of course, an entertainment entertaining group but in a serious way i think there's so much entertainment nowadays in the business in the music business that there should be also enough room for some bands that make a kind of a serious kind of art serious music and i consider focus as one of those bands to try and be as serious and deep and philosophic as possible. Wow. So even we use a lot of humor also in within the music, inside the music. Yeah. We are first of all a, a group that tries to make a serious kind of, an earnest kind of music. A lot of musicians, incredibly good musicians, don't write music, but for some reason I assume you do. The, what is your question? Sorry. I, my question is, do you actually write music as well as compose and perform? Do you write it down? Sometimes and sometimes not. Okay. 
Sometimes I put it on a sequencer and then I go to the studio, to the demo studio of Geert. And then what Geert makes together with me, we send to the other members of the group right. for a first listening and for some critic if they have. Or they might like it and study it as, as good as they can. So it's a collaborative effort, but I'll come back to that first yeah. question. When you have an idea for a mu piece of music, does it just arrive fully formed or do you have to build it up or how does it work? Yeah, sometimes I have to, uh, to really work my ass off, sorry to say the word, but to, to really blood, sweat and tears to form some maybe two bars or four bars. And uh, sometimes it comes as a stream immediately out of heaven, I think. <laughs> but l most of the time it's, it's lots of sweat. Yeah. Is that, are you working hard to polish an idea or are you working hard to actually have the idea? No, I'm not working hard to have the idea because I'm still waiting and having enough faith, faith all the time. Yes. That it comes from somewhere. Yes. And yes. it still does. I'm 72 years old now and it still keeps on coming, which is a, a wonder. Thank which God. Is a, yes. A, a divine thing. I yeah. think, yeah. yeah. I've, I've talked to artists and musicians and scientists and writers, and that seems to be the common experience that the ideas just arrive. All the work comes in polishing and fixing, but they come yeah. very often fully formed. Right. I, True. I talk about this because it, it fascinates me. Um, a musician called Ramesses first interested me in it because I'd been asked, you know, where do your ideas come from? And I thought it was unanswerable. But he was being interviewed by a journalist when we were talking about doing an album cover. And the journalist asked that question. He said, where do your ideas come from? And he said, well, when I'm sitting still like this, they come from over here. And Right, children. We, we all laughed and I thought, that's how it is. That's how it is. That's how the ideas come. <laughs> they, when you're still, yeah. um, you know, open, they come. Yeah, yeah, true. Have faith in something maybe more eternal and more big than the self. Yes. It's, yeah. um, I was talking to some students and I said, you have to make space for your subconscious to work, but it shouldn't be called the subconscious. It should be called the superconscious. It's That's that correct, quite correct. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. You, uh, you, this is me as an outsider, knowing you for a few years, but not for a terribly long time. But I do see you in my mind as permanently ready to play music. Which is not extraordinarily exceptional, but yeah, when I'm with people and there is a piano or a grand piano there with no player, then I might be playing within one half a minute. And yes. they play some of the latest material or some old focus stuff or, you know, there's always kind of fun because people recognize some tunes, but also I'm trying to, uh, to show some brand new material, which is unknown at all, you know? Yes. Well, yeah. I, I, I remember stories about you on the cruise that you would go ashore into a cafe and before yeah. you had time to order a cup of coffee, 
you were having an impromptu jam with musicians who probably didn't even know they were. Yeah. You know what I mean, it was just. Yeah, that was great. Your reputation <laughs> is that you do that. Yeah, maybe it was a bit over at that cruise, during that cruise. But uh, yeah, as uh, from the moment on that I knew there was a piano without a piano player, <laughs> and I had to be the piano player. But yeah. also the flute, because you take that with you when you go off the boat, don't you? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I think that is... It is the most magical of magical flutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. Beautiful. Thank you. And I would have thought when I was a child, I heard rock and roll when I was 12, because I'm older than you. And mm. I would never have imagined a violin or a flute in rock and roll. And yet mm -hmm. it works so perfectly. Yeah, not many bands use, using it, but you know, a few do. do. A few do, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, Tull was, I think, a little earlier than Focus, but not so many others. You, I mean, it would be a cliche to say you get yourself involved with classical music, all kinds of music. One of my favorite pieces of yours is about Strasbourg Cathedral. I'm, I didn't want to talk to you about your career in music, I, more about the creative process, but I just love that piece. Yeah. La Cathedral de Strasbourg. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, with my parents, I was in Strasbourg. And uh, I was not so impressed by the height of the tower because it's very high. But it was the sound of the bells that inspired me a lot. And that did me decide to uh, make this piece. And it's about the sound of the bells, mm. which is world famous, by the way. Yes. But I also experienced that as a child of like 12 or 13 years old. It's a beautiful piece. Did you ever Thank actually you. record the bells? Did that? N not those bells, no, no. No, I actually didn't, no. Nevertheless, a fabulous piece. <laughs> yes. Tell me about, I know you walk around with a flute and things like that, but do you carry a recorder or a notebook with you as well? A recorder? Oh, sorry, I don't mean a record. I mean, a, a, what I would have once called a cassette recorder or a tape recorder. <laughs> Something to record no, no, no. your ideas. A flute. A flute. Right. No, no. So if you have an idea for a piece of music, you have some way of fixing it. Keeping, yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to protect it within my head. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Keep was, it, keep it asked, warm. <laughs> I imagine if you've played it, that does kind of hardwire it, does it? Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I was asked once if I keep a notebook by my bed and I said, no because if I dream or whatever, I forget my dreams, I forget everything. But if I have a good idea, I don't forget it. I don't need to write it down. It'll be there in the morning and I can- Yeah. Great confidence in yourself, beautiful. No, it just is, you know, if it happens, it is really persistent. <laughs> It's persistent <laughs> enough, right. Hard to get rid of. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. So it looks like the rumors are that this might have an end to it, this plague that we're all living with. Maybe early spring, maybe later, but it looks like 
there are solutions afoot. So it's, it's quite exciting to be back in company again, I guess, and performing. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it too much. Yeah. I'm split on that. Part of me is very excited about it. And part of me is really enjoying the quiet still. Even though yeah. it's been going a while, I still, I still love yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, not everyone, sadly, is in a position to, but... That's yeah. true. You that's know, true. I've had times when I've had no work and that's caused me anxiety, but this is different yeah. and there's nothing I can do about it. So I don't have to rush around in my head trying to get work. I can just, okay, it's not, I can do what I want now. And that was profoundly freeing. I loved that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a fantastic position. Yeah. Yeah. So we should be talking at some point soon about um, your Rio recording. Oh, not now though, <laughs> sorry. No, yeah, we just are finished too well, you know which you've made a beautiful, beautiful cover design for, which is uh, a live concert in Rio de Janeiro, plus an album with all the 12 pieces called Focus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And uh, so that's going to come out in like a few months in February. All oh, right. 2021. Yeah. Brilliant. Called Focus 50. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amazing. It is amazing, isn't it? It's incredible. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, people are talking now as if 1971 was an, a magical year for music. And you were formed just one year by then, weren't you? You were formed in 1970. Yeah, beginning 70, we started, yeah. And it was very inspiring and everybody composed their own music. So there were many composers, many more than in the bands of today where they cover a lot. Then it was very normal that you composed your own stuff. Yes. And we were one of them. I heard That'd a very be, interesting explanation of why the Beatles started writing. They said that uh, when they were touring, there were three or four bands on the road with them. And they'd practice and practice particular songs, but they'd find that as heading the bill, they came last. Yeah. And the other bands had played the pieces they'd be practicing. <laughs> so... <laughs> so they came on last and were supposed to blow people away and everyone had heard what they wanted to play. So it was a, they felt the only solution was to write their own. Right, yeah. This kind of makes sense, but you're saying we're kind of back in that position there. Mind you, the choice of what to cover is huge compared to back in that time. Sorry, can you repeat that? Sorry. I was saying that um, the choice of what a band might cover is vast, as big as the universe. <laughs> yeah. Back then, there was a much smaller choice. That's true. Especially yeah. if it was topical. Yeah. How do you feel about touring with other bands? Does that work for you? Sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. We were touring with bands that were kind of supporting act for us. And sometimes that really works and sometimes it did not work at all. Right. We did a small tour with Hawkwind. Maybe you don't know that name. Oh yeah. 
and uh, we were not treated like normal stars. We were really the support act, and also we we got uh, uh, we got treated like that, and that didn't feel good. We didn't get the real attention that we needed. So I don't consider that as a very glorious tour. And that was England in halls of thousand and a half to three or four thousand, which is kind of big, not the biggest, but like a middle thing. But I didn't like that at all. No. And uh, I have that as a not bad experience, but as an experience that I would not like to 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 uh, to copy it again. No. I... But we have played with a lot of other people that made a lot of exp uh, impression on me. Yes. We played in America, for instance. Once with uh, Santana, which is really nice. Santana even wanted to make a double or a, a single album with me as a duet. It never happened, but the idea was there. Yeah, we play with uh, uh, with the Beach Boys once with Frank Zappa, only once in Tucson. Tucson, Arizona, and where, where again we played with uh, Jay Giles' band a few times. We played with uh, Chicoria and Return to Forever, and they were supporting act for us, imagine. Yeah. And that was amazing. It was nine gigs in the Midwest. And uh, we also, uh, we did a lot of concerts with, uh, let's say, big names in rock and roll. Yeah. I like Hawkwind, but <clears throat> if I was Hawkwind, uh, my worry would be you would blow them off the stage. <laughs> yeah, but they were so extremely loud and they also took all the time in the rehearsal moments that there was no time for us to make a, a proper rehearsal anymore. Right. So that kind of thing, you know, we were really number two. We were second rate. And that didn't feel fine. No. Not good manners. Yeah, I cannot say. And I don't know what it was. They had to... Uh, a giveaway for, for all the details and they took the giveaway. So. It's, it's one of those things that I guess, I hadn't really thought about it, but it must be a roll of the dice, whether it works or not in advance, mustn't it? No. Mm -hmm. Do you talk to them in advance and say, how is it going to work with you guys? Anything like that? No, I didn't have any anything to say. I didn't want to utter any conditions at all. No. Mm. No. How do you find doing it on the cruise with so many bands? Yeah, the cruise was great. First time was great. We even did not play with our own guitar player because he was ill. So we had Jan Dumay, who, who was in focus once, but of, already for years he wasn't anymore. Mm. And we had a lot of success on the ship. And the second time also, and the third time also. So all the three... Uh, cruises were a great success for us yeah yeah there was a a lot of nice buzz around the idea of focus on that on all of those cruises <clears throat> right i'm hoping to see you again sometime soon at trading boundaries you yeah, have any plans there of course but we don't have any uh, straight 
regulation about it. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> well, who knows? I, yeah. You can't tell if it will be open in January, February, March, but you've got to be sure by June it will be open and happening. Yeah. It's not over, but it can't go on forever, can it? No. No. There should come some, some solution. Michael's taken advantage of the fact it's been closed to completely renovate the place. Oh, really? That's going to look very respectable. <laughs> nice. Lovely. <laughs> Actually, Did you is. see already uh, examples of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. My exhibition opened on November the 1st and closed on November the 4th. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. I, last that night is... I did a live walkthrough online, but um, not the same thing. But yeah, Michael said he'll keep it open, but I don't know how long that will be. <laughs> That's going to be yeah. an interesting. Send him all my love, if you can. I will. Send him all my love. Yeah, I will. I think I'm okay. going to see him today, so I will. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Great. When we're done, I'm going to send you a copy of our talk. That's lovely. Thank you. Okay. So, I thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for this very nice conversation. Thanks. Thank you. And I really look forward to meeting you again. Every time I've met you, it's been wonderful. So, thank you. Same way here. Great. See you soon. Ines. Same way here. Thanks a lot.